All right, 25. Express y equals 3x squared plus 9x minus 30 in factored form. OK, well, to express it in factored form, we'll factor it. So uh, luckily, this 3 comes out of here. So the 3 comes out of all of these things. That divided by 3 is x squared. That divided by 3 is 3x. And that divided by 3 is negative 10. And now inside the bracket, I have a simple trinomial. So I know that x squared comes from x times x. So they go in there with the brackets. And multiplying to negative 10 and adding to positive 3, well, my factor pairs of 10 are only 1 and 10, or 2 and 5. And 2 and 5 are going to do it. Now, in order to get to positive 3, though, and multiply to negative 10, I need a positive 5 and a negative 2. Now, I still need my y equals, because this is a quadratic in factored form. Bam, done. OK, express this in standard form. OK, in order to get to standard form, I'm going to expand this thing. Now, you don't have to show this line all the time, but this is what's going to happen. So for the sake of the solution here, I'm going to remind you that squared means that there are two of these being multiplied together. So do not distribute an exponent. That is breaking rules of math. What this means is that it's times itself. So this times itself. And now I will multiply this thing together. So x times x is x squared. And then you get a negative 5x and a negative 5x. So x squared, negative 5x, negative 5x goes to negative 10x. And then positive 25. So x minus 5 squared turned into this trinomial. If you just put the squared into there and there, you would have just got x squared and the 25. You would have missed this. So don't distribute an exponent. Write two brackets. Expand it out. OK, next, once I've got my trinomial, I'm going to multiply the negative 3 in there. So negative 3x squared plus 30x minus 75 and then minus 4. So now that I multiply in, the brackets go away. And now I can actually combine those like terms at the end, these constant terms right here can go to negative 79. And that is in standard form. Remember, whenever you turn, well, in order to turn anything into standard form, just expand and simplify it till it's simplified in that standard form. Check. All right. Calculate the value of the discriminant and state the number of solutions for this. OK, first of all, in order to get the discriminant or the quadratic formula, I'm going to set this equal to 0. Now, I like having my x squared term being positive. So I'm going to keep this here and bring the other stuff over. So 11, sorry, negative 11x comes over and becomes positive 11x. 6 comes over and becomes negative 6, and that's now equal to 0. Now, do you guys follow what I mean by this? So the left side, right side, this is the left side and right side of this equal sign. So this was already on the left. I bring everything over to the left to meet with it. And now, on the right-hand side, it's just 0. First of all, set it equal to 0. Now, calculate the value of the discriminant. The discriminant is what's underneath the root in the quadratic formula. And what's underneath the root? b squared minus 4ac. Not including the root, just what's under it. So let's plug into that. Our discriminant is 11 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 6. Don't miss that negative. Which is 121 um, plus 120. I'm just going to punch this in. 11 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 6. That's why I said plus, because the two negatives here are going to change this to a plus. So you get 241. If you get something like 1 or negative 1, you didn't get your signs right there. This is the discriminant. Now, state the number of solutions. If the discriminant is positive and it's underneath the square root in the quadratic formula, it means I'm going to get two solutions. So d is positive. Therefore, two solutions. If the discriminant comes out negative, then you get no solutions, because the root you can't take the square root of a negative number. And if the discriminant is 0, you get one solution. Mr. Burns, line one, please. Mr. Burns, line one.